my channel and happy Friday. Today's video is actually the last video in my favorite reading curriculum little series that I've been doing throughout the week. On Monday, I featured the book Teach a Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. I'll have that linked up above here or down below. And then on Wednesday's video, I shared with you one of my current favorites and that's the Victory Drill Book Method and kind of how we're using that and we'll be using that starting in the fall as well. And then today, I'm going to be sharing with you all about alphaponics and kind of more about the background of it, how and why we use this, and yeah, just why I really, really love it and why it made my top three favorite reading curriculum choices. So before we actually begin the flip through and kind of layout of the curriculum, I wanted to share with you what the author states is just 20 good reasons to use alphaphonics in your homeschool. I'm actually just going to go down the list pretty quickly, <laughs> that way I don't get off on too many rabbit trails because sometimes when I'm reading lists I'm like, oh I agree, and then I go into like why I agree. But anyway, um, the first one, and this is again from the alphaphonics authors themselves, um, the first one is it's easy to use. The second one is the lessons are clear and simple for the learner, which I definitely agree. <laughs> the third is the program has no pictures and thus requires the student to learn the letters and the sounds and develop the crucial phonics reflex, which I definitely agree with that too. And we'll talk more about that going into the flip through. The fourth one is flexibility. The tutor and the pupil can take as much or as little time needed for each lesson, which is a great, great benefit. Um, the fifth one, the student achievement and satisfaction come as early as learners begin reading sentences in lesson three. So the sixth one, um, the program can be used for beginning readers or to remediate older students with reading problems. The seventh, the program teaches non-English speaking adults to read and speak English as well. So this is a great for, if you do have someone that doesn't know the English language, this is probably one of the top picks that they would suggest teaching them the English language. For number eight, when an individual is taught to read with alphaphonics, he or she will know how to teach others to read much easier and fluently. Number nine, um, in alphaphonics, the English alphabetic system, which is 26 letters and 44 sounds, is taught as a system and helps the individual develop an intellectual understanding of the sound symbol system. The tenth benefit is the program expands the mind and enhances brain power by helping the learner expand his or her vocabulary. Number 11, the program does encourage the student to write in cursive, thereby helping develop good writing and spelling habits. We'll again get into that later. And number 12, the program leads to a lifelong enjoyment of the written word. So number 13, the program helps enhance the learner's self-esteem, which is very, very true. Um, number 14, learning to read with intensive phonics increases future earning power and expands the scope of career opportunities in which high literacy is in demand. Number 15, alphaphonics can save a child from educational malpractice and prevent dyslexia. Number 16, success in teaching enhances the self-esteem of parents, teachers, and tutors. Number 17, this program provides the tutor with a proven and effective tutoring system. Number 18, <laughs> sorry, there's quite a few reasons here. But number 18 is alphaphonics provides teachers with a reading program that will provide learning achievement among all students of all grade levels. Number 19, alphaphonics, if used nationally, can help America's workforce become top-notch accurate readers. Number 20, if adopted nationally, this program can solve America's reading problem and increase efficiency in schools, hospitals, offices, and factories. So those are the 20 reasons, according to the author, of why you would use alphaphonics and why he recommends using it. But yes, let's go ahead and head on over and we'll go ahead and jump into the flip through and layout of the book. All right, so this is the alphaphonics. Um, and as it says here, it's an effective step-by-step -step intensive phonics program for teaching reading to beginners of all ages, designed for easy use by teachers, tutors, and parents. And if you're familiar with um, Kathy Duffy's reviews, um, speaking of which, if you need help deciding on a curriculum or you really just want to read an amazing review about said curriculum, go to Kathy Duffy's website. Her reviews are phenomenal and she has so much information. I feel like about every curriculum imaginable she's got info for. Um, but yeah, this made the Kathy Duffy's 100 top picks for homeschool curriculum. So definitely go check out her website if you want even more <laughs> details on this book. This is an all-inclusive curriculum, so it is actually complete with a teacher's manual and lesson plan. So we're going to go ahead and open up the book here. 
you're of course going to start with all of your content and everything like that. So first of all, I apologize, my now four year old, when she was like 18 months old, she got a hold of the book when I was going through this with my uh, son at the time. So yeah, ignore, ignore all the coloring. Thankfully she only got to one page. So one of the things I love about this is you can start your little ones on this curriculum when they just know the alphabet. They don't even have to know all the sounds because they are introduced to that one sound at a time in a certain order, starting in lesson one. So they actually recommend that when you are teaching the alphabet, you don't use the flashcards that have pictures on them because their reasoning is they don't want the little ones to associate, let's say an E for elephant. Um, they don't want them to associate pictures with the letters. Um, and the reason why it is a more intensive phonics program is they want the student's brain to actually look at the D and just think of, okay, this is the letter D and nothing else. Um, so they recommend that before you do start the book, and again, you're learning the alphabet before lesson one, is that you're just going A, B, C, D. You're learning uppercase and lowercase at the same time. But then they also said, as I just mentioned before, that <laughs> you don't have to know the actual sounds yet at this point. As long as you know the alphabet, they are ready to jumpstart onto this. And then you go into your lesson one. For lesson one, your teacher guide for every single lesson will be in the back of the book. So we will go back here to page 131. You are going to have your alphaphonics teacher manual. It's gonna go through the introduction. We'll just do a quick flip through of this and then the things I highlighted because I thought they were important, at least they were to me and my um, teaching styles and everything like that. Um, but it says that we often forget that our writing system is a two-way process to be used both for reading and writing, decoding and encoding, and a pupil must become proficient in both in order to be truly literate. So this program really stresses the fact that it's not just teaching your sound and your reading and the letter blinds, but at the same time, in the exact same lesson, the student will write out the sounds, they'll dictate the sounds, they'll spell the sounds, and all inclusive intensive phonics for each lesson. So, um, and it goes through our alphabetic system, gives you some more information on that. So to some teachers, this will seem like an overly academic way to teach reading, and it is on purpose because we want the people to learn to enjoy using his or her mind. And I love that they mentioned that because to a lot of people, me included by the way, it is a very, a very intensive approach because honestly in the first lesson you're taking these sounds and you're not only reading but as I said you are learning to write in cursive with them you're learning, learning to write manuscript you're learning to dictate and to spell and to write and just all the things in the first lesson um, so it's very intensive um, but again you do want to teach your child to love using his or her mind and it's a great way to do that so teaching the alphabet um, the fastest and it goes into saying that the fastest and most efficient way to teach the alphabet is to have the child repeat it after you in an alphabetical order while you point to the letters. Thus, the child learns the alphabet both orally and visually at the same time. And I love that. So usually, the oral learning will be faster than the visual since the oral alphabet, when repeated often enough, is learned almost like a melody or a poem, which is true. So we can go through and sing the ABC song. That's a great way for them to learn their ABCs. The alphabet lends itself easily to this kind of learning since it can be broken up into rhythmical and rhyming lines as follows. So, mentions as well that it will take some time before the child's visual learning catches up with his or her oral knowledge um, because, <laughs> which is true, because some kids will be able to recite it but will have a hard time associating. So they're saying to teach it as in like as you're saying it to point to the letters while you're teaching it, if that makes sense. At the same time, they should also learn how to draw the letters, which will help the child learn their different shapes more thoroughly. Then you're going to jump into the order of lessons. This is the actual teacher guide part that you're going to be using for each of the lessons. And it's going to tell you exactly what to do. Um, so you're going to have your student turn to lesson one in their textbook, which is this right here. Start by telling the class that you are going to read the sounds that each letter stands for. So you are going to go to here and you're going to tell your student ah, mm, and then ah, mm. so you're going to write these on the board. If you have a whiteboard, chalkboard, just anywhere or even a piece of paper is fine as well. Um, but you're going to go through the individual sounds until they grasp the sounds. So you don't want to actually put the sounds together until they know that this is an ah, 
and this is an mm, because if you put them together, they won't comprehend the fact that that's what it is until they know the sound. So you're going to introduce, and I like that it's all as. Again, sorry, this is colored. <laughs> it's probably hard to actually see. Um, but you're going to go ah, mm, and then if once they know solidly that ah and mm and a and m make those sounds, then you can introduce them. Well, th if this is an ah and this is an mm, if you put them together, like this is what it says. And so you would write that out. Um, and then you would, it goes into teaching like make a short ah sound, letting them recognize um, like ah as in cat. So did you hear that sound? Make it again and ask the student to repeat it after you. Uh, and the letter A that you see on the board and in your book stands for the A sound that you just made. So they're really comprehending the fact that the A that you wrote says A and the M that you wrote says M. Mm. And then again, you're going to go through the entire process of once they understand that all these letter names say certain sounds and you can start blending them together. Um, and they do also stress that the student also be able to write them out. So you're going to be introducing handwriting at the same time. Typically when they are little, they're doing uppercase, but this book does uppercase and lowercase at the same time. So they can learn to write uppercase A, lowercase A, and then M, and then really say that. And then they also recommend, <laughs> before you move on to the next lesson, they say in the back of the book that dictation and repeating things back is one of the most powerful things that you can do, especially when they are learning how to read. That dictation, and they call it as um, dictation being the secret weapon, so to speak, as to really testing your student's knowledge. And so they say that if your student is able to dictate and you ask them how something is spelled, and they are able to tell you how something is spelled by dictating it back to you. So you say, okay, what, how, does, how do you spell M? And then they will say A, M. Hence why dictation is the most powerful thing to use when testing if your kiddos are ready to move on. So before you move on, they are wanting you to obviously know the A, the M, blending the word out, and they're wanting you to write it, and then they're wanting it to dictate back to you. And then the most powerful thing as well is they also want you to introduce these letters in cursive at the same time. So I'm actually gonna show you the cards that I printed off one second. So I actually got these phonics cursive cards out for design specifically for alpha phonics. I actually got a bunch of free alpha phonics resources off of a blog and I will be sure to have that link down below for you to go check out. Um, but these are just like they, they were just paper and I went ahead and laminated them. And so once the child is introduced to the a ah sound, then they can go and they can take their pretty good size or like um four by six size probably. Um, and then they will take a dry erase marker and then they will practice doing their cursive letter A's. And another really powerful thing that when a student is actually writing in cursive is when they're writing in cursive, like yes, they're individual letters. Once they start taking these letters and blending them into other letters, so let's say like M A, so they would do M and then to go into an A, um, they're actually visually not just visually, but physically seeing the letters blend together. And so a really powerful reason why they do introduce cursive at this age as well is because you're obviously blending the letters in the handwritten form. And I know a lot of schools do not teach cursive anymore. Um, I personally will be teaching my kiddos cursive. <laughs> it's just such a, a good, good thing for them to know. Anyway, so and then your S. And so what I've done is I've taken the first, yeah, I think there's one, two, three, four, five letter sounds. Um, that they are introduced to on that first lesson. And I just am probably going to keep these separate until they have completed that entire first lesson. And then once we've moved on, I'll add in the other sounds from the next lesson. Um, this is a building block type course. So you do wanna make sure that every lesson is known thoroughly before you do move on. Because in the next lesson, which I'll show you here in a second, the next lesson, which we're gonna go over here, they're building off of that. So in lesson one, they learned M and as at an at. So you're going to be introducing at this point some more letters, hi, <laughs> to add on to that. So you're going to be like, okay, well, what's this letter sound? So you're going to introduce, well, they already learned letter S back here. So you're going to do S and then they already learned M. So by lesson two, you are already reading the full words. Like these are obviously full words as well, but they're adding in that third column. And the exact same thing for every single lesson. You are learning the sounds, the blends, the new word. You're writing it out. You are going to write it in manuscript and cursive. And then you will dictate it back to the teacher once we ask them like how you spell it. Hi, yes. 
Yeah, you gonna play with those? <laughs> so as I said, it is very, very intensive. Now, the simplicity of it, and this goes into one of the reasons why this book is the way it is. There are no illustrations, there's no bright, colorful pictures. So if your child is a visual learner, they may struggle with this. However, um, we, as I mentioned before, will write this on blackboards and chalkboards, and we'll make it into something more visual. But this book is really designed as the intensive phonics course that it claims to be. So it's very simple as the pros were laid out for us at the beginning. It is extremely simple. There, as I said before, there's nothing fluffy about it. Um, and again, if your child is a more visual learner and likes those pictures, this may not work for them. Um, but as I mentioned as well, I have um, done, I did a previous alphaphonics video and I shared with you what I did with my little guy. And <laughs> hi. And I would just write these out on little flashcards, little colorful flashcards, and he would blend them together that way as well, and then write them out. So there are fun ways that you can do it. It just might require more work for you as the parents if you are wanting this to work for that visual hands-on learner. But as I said before, it is so intense as far as the phonics program goes. And I do like that you don't have to know all the letter sounds going into it. So it's a great, great course if you have those little ones who have an interest in reading and if you sense that they are ready. So I do a lot of um, mostly child led learning when it comes to reading and stuff in our home, in our personal homeschool. So unless the child is actually showing interest and I know he's ready, I typically don't introduce this aspect. Obviously we do the letters, the letter blends, the letter sounds, but if your child does not know the letter sounds yet, again, that's okay because they teach them one at a time. And the other little thing that I really love about it is they actually do stress this in the teacher guide as well. Hi! <laughs> and that is never feel like you have to rush on to the next lesson. It's extremely, it's probably one of the most flexible courses that I know. There's so many lessons in a book, but it's not like a full-on curriculum where you feel like you have to finish it within a certain amount of time, right? Yeah. Yes. So I love that about it and they even say like don't even move on to the next lesson take as little time or as much time in this case as you need in order to make sure that your students are very proficient in the lesson before they move on so yes it's a great great curriculum I love it it is more intense I know it's not for everybody and if your kiddos obviously already know how to write and they are already kind of knowing all the sounds and everything, it will go much quicker than if you're just starting out everything from scratch. But yes, it is a great program. Our family loves it, and we'll probably be using it for years and years to come. But I will go ahead and end the flip through there. Well guys, thank you so much for being here and watching today's video. I really appreciate all of you. And just as a quick recap to go over all three courses for the entire week, for the Monday's video for Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons, that one is definitely one that if you have that visual hands-on learner, that would be a great option for you for a good read journal book. If your student is reading but needs some help with the reading speed and working on that brain power to get that speed up to par, so like my little ones, they can read an entire sentence without forgetting what the first part was about. <laughs> so you need to work on the speed, and honestly, it's great for sharpening skills for all ages is the Victory Drill book, so I highly recommend that one. And then this one you heard all about today. But yeah, thank you again for being here. I, again, appreciate you all watching my videos, and until the next one, you guys have a great weekend, and God bless. Bye.